first episode of the Owl House is pretty strange. Obviously, this is in retrospect and a result of what I like to call Season 1 Stride Seeking, where basically a lot of different show Season 1s are vastly different to the rest of it, mainly due to the show attempting to find its pacing, experimenting with what works and doesn't work, and presumably getting more funding and attention as it grows. The Owl House is a perfect example of this, but I digress. We start the show with a little Good Witch Zira book report, told from the perspective of Luz. The EAT THIS SUCKER bit was kind of funny, and at least to me, set the tone of the show as a not so serious one. Oh boy was I wrong. We cut to Luz in the principal's office and find out that she is in trouble for bringing live snakes to her school for a book report, along with bringing live fireworks? Luz, what the heck? Also, what kind of snakes did Luz bring? They couldn't have been poisonous as the principal gets attacked by one, but Camila, who is a veterinarian, doesn't react, meaning that it probably wasn't harmful. So why are they so aggressive? We see a compilation of all the previous times Luz got in trouble, and while I can see the first two times being problematic, what exactly is the deal with Luz playing with her eyelids? Isn't she like 14 or something? It's everyone else that's the problem. Camila, who is Luz's mother, tells Luz that she needs to attend a reality check summer camp, and I find it a bit interesting how Luz exclaims, no more weirdness. Nobody ever explicitly said it was weird, so maybe she thinks that she is weird? We see Luz standing outside her home, waiting to go to summer camp. She looks very dejected, and one might think it is because she is being sent to summer camp, but there might be more to it than that. A bit of a spoiler for those who haven't seen season 3, but in thanks to them, it is shown that Luz really tried her best with her book report, and seeing how her teachers and own mother reacted may have started the whole I am the problem arc that Luz goes through. Camila then mentions the pros of summer camp, which include balancing checkbooks and appreciating public radio. This was pretty funny, but Luz retorts that she doesn't like those and instead likes editing anime clips and reading books with convoluted backstories. Ugh, I really don't like this part. One thing I feel that this episode suffers from is how it tries to take itself seriously, but also attempts to be funny and relatable. This conversation is the last time Luz talks with her mother in person for months, and in hindsight, it should have been more emotional or personal, but the attempts to be quirky and relatable are thrown in and kinda ruins the moment. Camila also just roasts Luz with the fact that she has no real friends, and then Luz puts a perfectly good book into the trash. Again, in season 3, it is shown that this book was given to her by her deceased father, and she throws it in the trash! Personally, I would have made it so Camila tells Luz that she needs to be quote unquote more normal, and Luz exclaims that she is trying, but no one understands her, referencing her true desire. Luz would then get upset and run into the woods where she would lose Camila and enter the cabin, only to find herself in the boiling aisles. Just my two cents. I love the initial depiction of the boiling aisles and how Luz thinks it's the HE double hockey stick itself. Fun fact, the demon realm was initially going to be an actual representation of the bad place. But it's a bit of a shame the show couldn't explore more of it, but eh. I also like how Ida is initially represented as a filthy capitalist as she states that Luz is more valuable to her alive than dead. And the fact that she easily could have allowed Luz to go back to the human realm but makes her do her bidding instead. We are formally introduced to the Boiling Isles and visit the Owl House and OH MY GOD WHAT IS THAT? We are also introduced to the best character in the show, Hootie! And I will fight anyone who says otherwise. Okay seriously, do you now understand what I mean by season 1 stride seeking now? This is never brought up again, alongside whatever this is. We are then introduced to everyone's favorite gremlin, King. I love King's reaction to Luz. It is honestly what I imagine pets think whenever a random person picks them up. Now, you see this part? This is a valid time for humor. The show has just introduced new characters and is setting up for the rest of the episode. Ida picking up Luz and Luz clawing at King is so freaking funny, and this whole bit never fails to get a chuckle out of me. Ida then explains the situation they are in, as well as throws in a little bit of casual blackmailing. The three go to the conformatorium, and we get perhaps what is the singest great line ever spoken. Try to catch me when I'm covered in grease. I'm a squirmy little fella. A plan is made, and we get yet another great line. 
<laughs> now, the conformatorium sequence was a sequence. I personally would have liked for it to have been taken a little bit more seriously, considering what comes later in the episode. The whole being thrown in because you don't fit plot felt really forced, and maybe instead of writing fan fictions about food, maybe have them be peaceful protesters, or even just remove the whole prison vibe and make it an insane asylum or something to really drive in how the warden thinks of these people. Speaking of Warden Wrath, I love his entrance and his menacing voice. I can hear you. But he very clearly looks at Luz and King and then proceeds to do absolutely nothing. Like, he is the warden. If there is someone who should know the prisoners, it should be him. And speaking of prisoners, is it casual Friday or something? Why is everyone dressed in their Sunday best? Tanella knows was great, but didn't the warden just smash Luz's gates in? How is the thing still able to open? Anyway. Now this next part is another good example of forced humor. We just got introduced to the antagonist. Tension is high, and what we get is... No! My weak nerd arms! Now, normally this wouldn't be a problem, as it is common for humor to follow a tense situation. But then we get hit with this emotional punch. Just get out of here while you still can, kid. Enjoy freedom for us. Like, do you see the emotional whiplash going on here? We went from tense and serious villain entrance to haha, funny relatable moment to I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do to save you and you will probably die alone. Also, why does Luz insist on using the word weirdo to describe everyone? I feel that weirdo has a negative connotation to it, and just because you might think you are a weirdo Luz doesn't mean you can label others as weirdos. And again, using the weird weirdo is so jarring. Like, this is supposed to be an emotional moment. Why not just use the term different or even just say, why can't people be themselves? And why am I getting so worked up over this? The Burger King review was pretty funny, and I like how Ida is so confident in herself that she sent Luz and King alone in a freaking maximum security prison. The emotional bit about Ida and King being together was also very well done, and serves as a great moment in Ida's character. But then Ida loses her head, literally. And while I love everyone's reactions, the episode once again does a 180 and turns a potentially really cool rising action scene into Haha, funny moment! Now, this is much more opinionated, but imagine the conversation if this was somewhat serious. We could have had hints and foreshadowing to Belos and the Day of Unity. Wrath could have said something like, The Emperor would be pleased to see you, or Still running wild with your magic. Obviously referencing wild magic. I like the little reference with Expect! So, and Wrath chasing them was really nicely animated. I also really like how Luz only opened the three jail cells, meaning that she either left everyone else, or that there were only three people in the entire conformatorium, and I don't know which one is funnier. Wrath taking off his mask was amazing, albeit a little anticlimactic. I feel that he should have taken it off in the room after Luz knocked him out and escaped, in like a fit of rage. The whole we belong here moment again felt a little forced, but I can't really think of a workaround besides replacing it entirely. Maybe instead of that they all could have been sneaking away, but then Luz rallies them to stand up against the warden once and for all. Now the line, nobody should be punished for who they are, is perfect, and while it is the central theme of the episode, it could have done a much better job in expressing it. Then, I'm sorry to say, but the climax of the episode with the group taking down Wrath is just completely ruined for me when the line I practice the ancient art of fan fiction is uttered. I can see it being appealing to some people, but to me, it just felt really cringe-worthy. I feel that this would have been a perfect time to repeat the core theme and say something like, not everyone is the same, and that's what makes us unique, before Luz freaking blows up Wrath. The ending was actually pretty emotional. I love how Luz gave King the little crown and Edith's expression when Luz says that this was the most fun she ever had, as if her life wasn't in mortal peril the whole time. My only gripe is that Luz seemed really angry at the thought of going to camp, which isn't really in her character. Instead, she could have looked at the camp brochure, show reluctance to going back to the human realm, and feebly say that maybe she could learn a thing or two in the Boiling Isles instead. And finally, I find it really weird how Luz just assumes that the camp didn't contact Camila saying that she never arrived. She is obviously very lucky that V went in her place, but still. One last really minor thing I want to say is that the outro would make absolutely no sense to anyone watching the show for the first time. Who are these people? Where is Luz? 
If it were up to me, instead of the normal outro for the first episode, I would have just used the backdrop of the owl house at night as it is actually really nice to look at. So all in all, this was unfortunately a below average episode for me, and it is really hard to imagine that this show eventually turns into the masterpiece that is season 2. In my opinion, this episode could have done a much much better job of setting its first impression, considering it was already planned that the show would take a darker turn. But for what it's worth, it nicely introduces the main characters, as well as does a decent job of setting up the storyline for the show. It also has a few emotional and funny moments here and there. And with that, we get a beautiful shot of the Owl House against the night sky. And that will be- a OKAY WHAT THE ACTUAL FUCK!